curved glass walls. They are sleek, modern, and a total headache to make, unless you know the right tools in Revit. And in this video, we are taking the guesswork out of the equation and walking you through a complete step-by-step -step method to model curved glass walls like a pro. So here you'll learn how to create curved curtain walls, control mullions and panels with precision and avoid the common mistakes that make your model messy and completely impractical. Now, whether you're designing for concept, presentation or detailed construction drawings, this technique will instantly upgrade your workflow. Let's jump into Revit and get started. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to design carved glass like a pro. So whether you're an architect, engineer or designer or just exploring Revit, this video will transform how you approach glass wall designs. Okay, quick heads up. If you are new to Revit or is still building your foundation, we have got a free Revit Architecture Essentials course that covers all the core tools you need to start modeling with confidence. It's perfect if you want to fill in the gaps or get up to speed fast and yes, it's 100% free. You can find the link in the description below. So sign up now and dive in after you've signed up. So the first thing that you do in Revit, you just click on new and we're going to be working with the architectural template. So if you don't know how to start a new standard Revit design, kindly check down in the description where I've linked a YouTube video on how you can understand to come up with a standard design. So once you have opened your drawing, the next thing that you'll do, you'll just save it to the specific folder that you want to save. So in this case, I'll just save it as draw carved glass wall like a pro in Revit and I'll change my backup options just to one, hit on OK, then hit on save. And just after a few seconds, it's going to be updated up here. So when it comes to Revit, when you're coming up with your walls, if you hit on WA on your keyboard to activate this command shortcut, or you can just check down in the description where I have linked an ebook where we have covered more than 100 commands, you can understand more shortcuts, you'll find that we have some type of walls. The first type of wall is a basic wall. Then we have a cut-in wall and a stacked wall. So when you're working with a basic wall, for this case, let's work with something like a reinforcement wall, which is a 300 concrete wall. If I click on this option and I want to draw a curved wall about it, so let's say I click on that point, give it a random radius, something of the sort, it's going to give me this solution. But if you're working with a cut-in wall, which is basically a glassed wall, that has some millions, if you click on the same circle option and you just create your same radius, if you click on away, you're going to see that we have this break in our circle. So this is brought about by this cut-in wall system. And something interesting, if I was to click on 3D and let me just have these two views side by side. So I'll just click on this workspace, hit on WT so that I have my 2D view and my 3D view on this other side. We can clearly see that this is a perfect curve. Well, here we have segments. And if you were to hover your cursor, hit on tab select a couple of times, you're going to see that you have a certain panel that you can be able to select within this cut-in wall system. But in this design, I'm going to show you how you're going to come up with a perfect curve for your glass. So how do we do this? It's quite simple rather. If you go to vault, so if I click on vault, click on this drop down option so that I access these other two wall types. I'm going to go to basic wall. So I'll click on this wall retaining 300 concrete. And then I'll just simply click on edit type options under properties. Then I'll duplicate it. So I'll hit on duplicate, give it a code SC for source card. Your case, it can be any other thing. Then I'll just call it carved wall. Then I'll just simply hit on OK just to save it. And just like that, it has been updated here. Then I'll hit on edit option and then I'll hit on preview so that I can see what we are editing in real time. So I'll just simply change the material from concrete by hitting on this ellipse option and then this material browser will pop up. So I want it to be glass. So I'll just simply search on glass and then I can see what we have already in the project or I can browse for more materials that we have in the library. So I'll just click on glass. You can either opt to go with the render appearance by just clicking on graphics, checking on this render appearance and we're going to be using the render appearance for this project. After that's done, I'll hit on OK. I'll change the thickness to 20 mm rather than 300. After that's done, you're going to see that our presentation or preview shows what we have in place. But that's not all. Under view, we have this option of 
2D, which is a floor plan, and I'm gonna change it to section, which is basically where I can see it in the vertical option area. And not only that, you'll have more options here. And for this case, we're gonna be focusing on sweeps. So I'll click on this option of sweep once, and then I'm gonna be adding a profile. So click on add profile, and I'm gonna change the profile from default. And I'm gonna go with this profile for handrail rectangular 50 by 50 mm, so that we can add a profile either on the top or at the bottom. But for this case, it's gonna start by base by default. So after that's done, I'll just simply hit on apply, and we're gonna be having this added item or sweep down here. Then I'll hit on duplicate and rather than having it base, I'll just simply have it as top. And then after that's done, I'm gonna assign material to aluminum. So you're gonna search on aluminum, select on heat, hit on apply, then click on the lips again, search on aluminum, select on it, then hit on okay, then hit on apply, then hit on okay again. After that's done, you're gonna just simply hit on okay, then hit on okay, and just like that. So now we have done that, but we cannot see any difference here. So how are we gonna change our curtain wall to be this perfect curve? It's quite simple. You just simply select on your specific curtain wall, hit on edit type, and under this property type options, you're gonna find this option of curtain panel. So under it currently is none, but just click on this drop down and select the new basic wall that we have created. Just simply select on it, hit on apply, and you're gonna see right away that the change has been applied. And if I hit on okay, we can clearly see that now it's a perfect curve. And if I was to zoom in to our glass panels, we can clearly see that our glass panels are not being connected using any millions. And even if I was to change from thick to thin lines over here, you still have the same condition. So how are we gonna add our vertical millions? It's quite simple. Just simply select the same curtain wall, hit on edit type, and from this type properties, we're gonna have this vertical grid option. So you can change the spacing option. Let's say we go with maximum spacing of distance 1500 millimeters. And then I change the vertical millions. Let's say from none for interior, we go with something like 50 by 150, for the rectangular millions. And then for border one type, I'll go with the V corner millions. And the same for border two type, I'll go with the same. Then I'll hit on apply. After that's done, we're gonna have, let's say this one in here. So you can go through it, but this is not any issue. I'll just simply click on delete elements. And just like that, now we have that option resolved. So you can also do the same for your horizontal millions if you want to do so over here and the same thing is gonna be applied. So that being said, we can clearly see that we have this perfect curve for our cutting glass walls. So you can now start your design very simply just by selecting what you already have here, just deleting it, and then you just go back to walls, select the specific cutting wall that you want, exterior glazing, then you can start, let's say from, so you can go with this option of start and radius arc, so start, and, and then you're gonna specify the distance, let's say around here, just like that, we can clearly see that we have this perfect curve. I'll simply dash select everything. Then I'm gonna use this option of draw at the mirror line. So let's say from about here, this point here to the opposite end, which is just over here. And just like that, now we have this other section created within our design. So you can delete the elements that are overlapping or something of the sort. So after that, you can come up with a roof quite fast. So just click on roof, specify level one, but that is more elevated than level zero. Click on yes, and then you're gonna just simply come up with a specific item that you want. If it's an inscribed polygon or a circumscribed polygon, you can go with this. Let's say go with eight side, giving an offset of let's say 600 millimeters, then you can either go with a radius, so you can specify a radius of a specific number, or you can just go with, undo that option, specify the center, then you can just specify, let's say a point around here, and just like that, we have our roof placed. If I click on finish, we're gonna have this option of attaching it, this walls to our roof, so I'll just simply attach it. Then I can just simply delete the elements I don't need. Then because our roof is still selected, I can just change, the material, let's say to a thinner material, something of the sort, and then delete the elements that we do not need. And if you wanna place your floor, it's still still quite simple. So I can go with architectural floor and I can go with peak walls. Then I'll just simply pick that wall and this other wall here, 
Now I'll just zoom in just to make sure that there's no overlap or there's no gap. And I'll just click on finish. And just like that, now we have our floor, we have our roof. And if you wanna place your door, it's still quite simple. Click on, on door here or DR on your keyboard to activate the shortcut. Hit on edit type. Rather than using wooden doors, we're gonna load in a specific type of door used for curtain wall. So it's an internal door and it's the first door. This is a double door or this single door. So we can go this single door, hit on okay, then hit on okay. Then you can specify where you wanna place it. So let's say on this side here and maybe on this other end like that. Just like that, it has been updated within our 3D. And if you orbit, everything looks perfect. All right, so that's done. So you can opt to have perfect visualization within Revit just by going to this option here, going to graphics display options. Then you can add more information if you want it to be realistic. If you wanna see the shadows, let's say the cast shadows and show ambient shadows and having a background, you can add the sky, the gradient. You can do so much within Revit. You can hit an apply and then you're gonna have this type of display. Not only that, to have more beautiful renders, you can use a third party option where I usually prefer using Lumion and you can have a direct integration. So all that you have to do is having Lumion already installed within your PC. So just simply launch it and integrate it with Revit. So you just simply create a new project. Let's say we go with uh, the sub urban environment. So after it has finished loading the template, all that you have to do is just simply jump back to Revit and then just click on this option to have your live sync. So it's just currently sending this specific project that we have here to our Lumion software. And uh, once that's done, you can just simply move around your model just to see how it looks like. We cannot see our floor, but it's quite simple. Just simply select on it. And then we're gonna use this option, let's say place on landscape, then we're gonna, let's say, move it vertically. So you just hover your cursor here, just simply move it up, and then you can move it also horizontally if you wanna do that. So you're gonna uh, just simply move it in place. And just like that, you can just simply see how your project looks like, and it looks really, really amazing. And you can even sell this specific model to your client if you wanted, and it looks really, really good. So obviously you can come up with more advanced structures, especially in Revit, if you use this option of massing. So we have already gone through that option. So if you wanna come up with certain projects like this one, I have linked down in the description how you can come up with these beautiful advanced curve walls and curve roofs that you need to learn today. And that's it. Your curved glass wall is now ready to shine in any project. If you found this helpful, don't forget to check out our free Revit Architecture Essentials course. The link is in the description and pinned comment. It's a great way to build a strong foundation and unlock even more design potential with Revit. And we want to hear from you. What Revit topic should we cover next? Drop your suggestions in the comments. We read every single one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.